Quick disclaimer, this video and this show deal with some pretty hefty topics like depression and drug addiction. I am by no means an expert on, well, anything really, but this is all my interpretation and my opinion. If you have another view or interpretation, I'd love to hear it down below. Anywho, to the review. Bojack Horseman is a good show. Okay, 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 okay. While I could just list out the usual statements I use about why this show is incredible, instead I thought it would be fun to take a deep dive into my favourite episode of the series, The Face of Depression. I could go on and on about the symbolism used or dissect every line of funny, witty dialogue. Raven! She's circling around portending my doom? She's gonna swoop in and peck out my chances? That is so... like her. But I think I've narrowed down what I want to talk to to two slash three main themes. This show deals with this topic a lot, The more specifically it dangles the question of can someone really change, even someone like Bojack Horseman? The show constantly sets up questions like this with no right or given answer, it is up to the audience to decide for themselves. Let's take a look at Bojack. The intro really highlights how he hasn't changed from his former pre-rehab life, different outfit, same Bojack. The same Bojack that is stuck in a perpetual cycle of abandoning his friends when they need him most and hurting them out of fear. Same thing with Herb, Penny and Charlotte, Sharona, and of course Sarah Lynn, who is alluded to with the planetarium-like sky. Yet throughout the episode we are shown how Bojack has changed, for the better. He spends the whole episode reconnecting with his loved ones. He gives solid advice to Princess Carolyn about her work-life balance, finds Todd a match on his asexual dating app, and even sincerely thanks Diane for her help in his rehabilitation, along with tidying up her apartment. We'll come back to Diane in just a moment. The show mocks how many sitcoms and TV shows focus and survive on the status quo. Todd's character design hasn't changed at all, and from a short snippet from a phone conversation Bojack has, it seems the assistant treatment hasn't exactly changed either, following the strikes earlier in the season. 5am tomorrow. Please stay on the line for a survey that directly determines whether or not I get fired. This is understandable of course. If all the characters problems are solved and overcome, the show would be over. But once again the show subverts this sentiment. Towards the end of the episode, Bojack lets his grey hair show through, he changes that iconic outfit, and takes up a university professorship job, something that is very much out of the limelight that Bojack is used to. We also see the start of Todd changing and improving the relationship he has with his mother, and Diane starts taking her dandy to presence again, causing her to gain weight and change her attitude and perspective. This theme reaches a pinnacle at the ending scene, where Bojack attends a historic representation of an old horsey service. The service highlights the simple things that have changed, the technology and the language used, but we also see what hasn't changed, Bojack's need for a sense of community, especially with other horses, and the importance of forgiveness and mercy. You could even interpret the reenactor's last line as Bojack's attempt to completely start over his life from scratch. Looks like you found some solace in our show. Stay if you like, in 30 minutes we start over. Honestly, forgiveness comes up so much in this episode, I thought about making it another topic to discuss. Actually, you know what, screw it, let's talk about... As has been established in previous episodes, especially in Bojack's conversation with an inebriated Dr. Champ, and when Bojack visits Herb, Bojack really struggles with forgiveness. The many ways of dealing with forgiveness and mercy are illustrated most strongly in this episode with Sharona and Bojack, Hollyhock and Tawny, a little bit of Mr. Peanut Butter and Pickles, and finally Bojack and himself. Sharona is at first dismissive of Bojack's attempts to talk at first, following her losing her job so many years ago due to their negligence. It's only when Bojack visits Hollyhock that he begins to understand how to say sorry. Hollyhock is currently in an argument with her friend Tammy. Wait, what was her name again? Tawny? Who names their child Tawny? What is she, an owl? <clears throat> At first, Tawny represents a stand-in for Todd. Her outfit, odd way of saying things, and her randomly appearing in Hollyhock's car seem to give this away pretty clearly. But I believe it's more complicated than that. In her resolution with Hollyhock, I believe she instead represents Bojack, someone who doesn't think they can ever be forgiven, and so believes that saying sorry is basically pointless by now. How could she ever be forgiven, if she can't even forgive herself? You do this thing where you don't think you can ever be forgiven, so you don't apologize, but I can't forgive you if you don't say you're sorry. Okay, I'm sorry. Thank you. 
This perfectly mirrors Bojack, who so desperately desires to be held accountable for his actions without actually facing them himself. In other words, the show is trying to illustrate how asking for forgiveness can be so much harder if you don't consider yourself worthy of that forgiveness. This sort of connects to PB and Pickles. After PB cheated on Pickles with Diane, he couldn't forgive himself, much less just ask Pickles to forgive him. Instead, he comes up with a scheme where Pickles can sleep with any man of her choosing to get back at him. But it doesn't seem to be working out that way. You could draw some conclusions about how revenge doesn't really give satisfaction and closure, only forgiveness can do that. But I feel like I'm clutching at straws here. We come back to the ending again. It's very common in religion for themes of repentance and forgiveness to come up. In this case, Christian beliefs of forgiveness seem to bring some solace and realisation to Bojack. As the pastor says, It is only when we show ourselves forgiveness and mercy that we truly live a life of grace, that we are reborn. But this show isn't saying that this approach is infallible either. After all, the church still burnt witches at the stake. I could talk a lot more about the religious imagery used here, referencing works like Nietzsche, Sartre and Kierkegaard's on existential nihilism, and where that leaves religion in the modern world. But I feel like I'm really leaving the normies behind here who don't want an existential crisis, so uh, just do your own research. That being said, it's time to get real and talk about... The B-plot of this episode involves Mr. Peanut Butter, handling his responsibility as the national face of depression, following Princess Carolyn's shenanigans to get PB back in the good books of the public eye. The way I interpret this entire section of the episode is a satire and criticism of the way mental illness is depicted through the eyes of the media, and especially how it's oversimplified. We see the representation of mental illness through the eyes of PB, the eyes of the media, and through the eyes of Diane, someone who was actually struggling through depression herself. PB admits to his partner in crime Joey Pogo that he isn't actually depressed, and together they skim read a leaflet on the topic, and decide that this would be enough to represent mental illness to the masses. The literature for this tour that I did not read, but had my mom peruse and then paraphrase for me? On the other hand we have Diane, struggling to deal with the stress of writing her book of essays, explored in another fantastic episode, Good Damage, and she's feeling reluctant to take her antidepressants. Incidentally, the Diane section of the show leads to possibly my favourite line of dialogue of the entire show. I think I'm depressed. Yeah? I love this line, mostly because of Bojack's response. There's no judgement or questioning here, but just acceptance and concern for his friend. What Bojack's response shows is something that is lacking from PB, and by extension the media, and a percentage of the audience watching. Understanding. And that is I guess the entire point of the episode for me. Mr. Peanut Butter and I may never truly understand what it is like to have depression, but through hearing different perspectives and watching great shows like this, we can come closer to a better understanding of it and other conditions like it. Diane's speech about how she's feeling and her growth towards seeking help is just wonderful, and while I cannot say personally how accurate it is to capturing depression, I can say that I was incredibly moved by it. This is all encapsulated in the ending of the episode, where the producers show once again that they have a great taste in music. The song Take Me Down Easy by James Henry Jr. starts playing, and the episode begins to conclude. It is a beautiful song that for me captures so succinctly what Joey Pogo blurted out without understanding. People who seem happy can actually be the most depressed. The lyrics go along something like this. I am a tall tree. I weep like a willow. My scars are hiding. My branches don't show. Yes, I am a tall tree, with roots like a newborn. Your wind is blowing, and over I go. Later they read, Yes, I can sing sad songs. It's easy to find them. The worst kind of heartbreak won't leave you alone. Personally, to me, this really alludes to the idea of depression. Someone who is hiding their scars and experiences with a facade and how simple sad songs and mantras don't really capture the full picture. Regardless of this episode's true intended meaning, I think it is a great episode, full of satisfying character growth and struggles, really showing the show at its best. And besides, as Todd says, isn't the point of art less what people put into it, and more what people get out of it? Food for thought. <laughs>